We got a TRS 24 snowblower. Bought this in 92, I think. Of course, uh, Oma kind of gave me a hard time for spending all that money. Matter of fact, you know what? I think I'm going to go find the original receipt to see exactly what I paid for this thing back in 92. Um, obviously, I've had excellent service with it. This particular model is made in Canada. And today what we're going to do is I'm going to replace the oil. Uh, the cord broke. Of course, I don't have any cord handy. Uh, I'm going to have to run to the store to do that. Uh, but that'll probably be the last thing I do. Uh, but the main thing is um, I think that I think I don't know if my friction wheel needs adjustment or if the rubber finally cracked on the outside. I was able to get a replacement part from the Deer Boys, uh, and uh, it's branded Briggs and Stratton, which makes sense. The engine's Briggs and Stratton, and probably the whole drive assembly, uh, and the actual snowblower steel. Uh, I don't know if they stamped it, assembled it, or whatever in Canada. Uh, but this part is made in Canada, and um, John Deere part number. M110594. All right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> got my receipt here. Let's see, I took delivery 12, 15, and 1991. And the base cost for this TRS 24 was $960. Now, keep in mind, could have probably bought an MTD or something like that for probably around 400 bucks. So it was about twice as much as everything else. But I mean, as you can see, I've had this since 1991, and I replaced. Uh, there was a main bearing in here uh, for the for this uh, the two stage, and I think. Oh, and I've. I put a tube in one of the tires and that bearing, and that is it. This is only the third thing that I've done to this other than change oil. Um, so, I obviously, I think I got my money's worth out of it. So, again, 12 15 1991 took delivery for $960. Okay, well, I think what I'm going to do, because I did not bring, or I did not warm it up, I think I'm going to throw a little something in the oil before I change it. Let's see. Oh, I got a little bit of sea foam left. Let me pour a little sea foam in there. Just to get things loosened up a little bit. Okay. All right. Let's look at my five eighths. Okay. Now, what you want to do is push it like so. And you can just unscrew this thing your plug look at there like a glove okay Nice and cold, so it's going to take a little bit. Okay. Now, let's pull this guy out a little bit.
green that well. Seat bombs coming out now. That's cleaned up. Now, I think what we want to do is I'm just going to pick this thing up. It's on its auger. Yeah, this should be fine. It doesn't look like anything dripping, there's no gas in it, so. Alright, well let's get you readjusted here. Get your bird's eye view. Okay. Let's get off this space plate. See what we're dealing with here. Okay, four bolts. This should come off. Okay. All right, well, let's get you in here. Looks pretty good. Um, yeah, let me get you on the handheld and a light. I want to measure both of these. Okay, so what do we got here? Thirty one. Ah, point thirty two. This one's actually a little bit thicker. Could be the metal, too, but Yeah, this metal's a little thinner on here, so it hasn't worn down at all, but if you feel it, this has some give to it. This is hard as a rock, so it's not that it's worn down, but it's not malleable anymore like this is. And I think that's causing the issue on the cold days, that's when it slides on this plate. But anyway, it's not that difficult, and I've got it upside down, so let's swap it anyway. Okay, let's get you in a different angle. All right, let's get these nuts off. 
the, or I'm sorry, the bolts off of the friction wheel. Now, this, of course, it's mixed. It looks like it's an 11 millimeter. So now's the time to have a helper, and I got a helper who's gonna lock the clamp down. So now this won't move. And of course, it's moving on the inside. Nice. But fortunately, I have a ratchet. There are three of these bolts and nut combinations. Okay, you can uh, undo the clamp. Okay, let's do this one. Clamp her down. I suppose I should probably tell a funny story while I'm doing this, but I just can't think of any. <laughs> All right, undo the clamp. Thank you, dear. Okay, clamp her down. Sandy, do you have any good, good funny stories? Not any. Okay, well, I guess he's going to be camera shy. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Just kind of. Look at there, we didn't even lose anything. All right, you can unclamp it. Thanks, dear. That's all I needed. Okay. That should be, yep. Perfect. Okay. Now. Now I'm going to read the instructions quick. Okay, it says, okay, remove those three nuts and lock washers from the friction plate. Okay, move speed selector lever to first gear. Okay, do that. Oh, looks like it's already on first gear. Oh, now it's on first gear. Okay. Okay, and there's a bearing plate on that as you're facing it on the right side. Loosen the four nuts. Okay, let's get you on the other side here. Okay. Now let's see what those are. Mm -hmm. Stand up. Okay. Why is this being such a pain in the butt? I don't know. Okay, well, looks like this little bevel, or both of these nuts, they've the nut has rusted the threads and I can't get it off. So, I'm just gonna use a cold chisel and a big hammer. What the heck? Can't do it the right way. 
use the big hammer, I guess, right? Why not? Okay, that worked. Looks like we're gonna be needing new hardware anyway. That's fine. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but the threads are all rusty in there, so that would be why it was spinning. Okay, and of course this one is too, so let's just do this. Perfect, we got her. All right. Yep, same thing. Threads rusted, okay. that going to give us enough space between the wheel? It says it's supposed to, but I... Okay, well that plate... Alright, I'll have to remove it. Okay, let me make sure you guys can see what I'm doing in here. There, that's a little better. So, it looks as if you can take, you can get this off. All right, look at there. The old destructions actually worked. Okay. Okay, let's slide this out this way. Oh, nope. Oh, all right, we gotta go through here. That's fine. That's what we'll do. Alrighty. Here's the old one. Again, there's plenty of rubber there, but it is hard as a rock. So we shall put the new one in. Give a quick check. How the holes line up? They sure do. Okay. Slide him in. Look at there. Easy peasy. Okay. Nice. All right. Let's get our housing back on there. Okay, it's good. All right, let's get one, let's get two of these bolts on there. The nuts. 
get our bolts on there. Okay, that was an 11 millimeter. Nice and snugged. Don't get too carried away though, fellas. You just want to snug it up nice. Okay, well, I think, uh, yeah, I think we need to get some hardware. Get this uh, job buttoned up so we can get the oil in there. All right, so let me turn you back on again after you come back from the hardware store. All righty, guys and gals. I am back from the hardware store with some new some new carriage bolts. So let's get these babies in here. Get this thing back together again. Okay. There. 
That looks good. All right, I'm gonna grab a shop towel and use a little brake clean and wipe that plate down. Ah, there's a little piece of the bearing. That's the bearing I replaced. It's right underneath there. And there was a chunk of the old one yet sitting inside here. There we go. Alrighty. good okay all I've got left to do now is do the instructions and get it set up I don't think I'm gonna have to move much of anything simply because I don't remember ever changing this and the thickness was exactly the same as the old one it's just the rubber was hard as a rock. So let's take a look. Read the instructions. Need to move it to first gear. There's first. Check position of friction wheel. Right side of wheel should be three and three eighths. And left side of plate. Okay, let's see what that measures. Three and three eighths. Let's see, will this thing fit in here? Three and three eighths, that is right on the money. Okay, so yeah, you wanted the edge of the steel because the rubber section is a little bit smaller than the steel. So you want the outer right measured to the outer of this steel uh, plate needs to be three and three eighths of an inch on at first gear and that is a, exactly where it's at so perfect 
should see that come down. There's a little bit of play in that, but that's not bad from all the use this thing has gotten. Okay, that seems to be okay. good so above the roll pin so slightly <clears throat> so that spring will give this assembly this is what I'm talking about right up here this assembly right here it's nice and snug so we're all looking good okay well I think all we got left to do now is just put it back together again and, and get the oil put in it. And uh, let's get you a little closer here. Put some gas in it. I think we're good to go. So let's get that plate put back on. Alrighty. That's done. Alright, let me turn you off and then I'll get you turned back on again when we're putting the oil in it. Okay, all right, just a couple things before uh, I flip this back up again. Um, I did it, there's a nut on the bottom of this spring. I did take it up a couple of winds uh, just, to, just to make sure that that's engaging right away. That's what it's doing. So that's, um, yeah, there's not much slop in there now at all. You still need a little bit so you can get this pin engage in the handle right up in there um, but otherwise everything looks pretty good I, I do want to take a shot of the serial number um, yeah so we got that all right <clears throat> and then I'm gonna flip this thing back up again put some of the tools away and then let's uh, put some oil in it Alrighty guys and gals, uh, it's dark outside, I got distracted. I needed to do a little bit more work to this thing. I just uh, leveled off um, the front blade, uh, nothing too interesting there. Um, I'll take you off the tripod and just show you what I did. Um, so anyway, let's, let's get the oil plug put back in so we can put some oil in it. All right. Okay, for many years I've been using uh, liquid molly. And I thought I would try uh, the AMS oil, small engine oil. Um, so, I think it's as good a quality as that. So, let's give this stuff a shot. All right. After I get this thing set up, I'll turn you back on again. Guys and gals, looks like we got this project all wrapped up. Uh, very responsive uh, with that new friction wheel in there. I was really happy with how how quickly it engaged. Not jerky, nice and smooth. Uh, looks like I've got uh, I've got that handle set correctly with this spring. 
down here. It's got a little bit of slack, but not bad. Uh, it engages pretty quick. Um, reverse works extremely well. Uh, reverse didn't work well at all with the other wheel. So pretty happy about that. I just checked the oil uh, right on the mark. A uh, couple things I did um, on the sides here, you're going to notice that it's got a riding plate, a uh, skid plate, or a leveling plate, whatever you want to call it. And um, I needed to uh, make sure that was level. It's nice and level now. And the blade is uh, even. And it sits uh, flush with the driveway. So I uh, got this project all ready to go. We should be getting some snow here uh, Tuesday. So I've got this thing all ready to go. Started up well. Uh, never had a real issue with, uh, with this snowblower starting. Um, I did, I think I replaced the valve and seat maybe in the carburetor. I, I, it's been a while, I can't remember. But anyway, I haven't done much of this at all. Uh, so anyway, hey uh, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this help helps somebody out there. Uh, and uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, God bless and uh, enjoy.